Good morning, McGee Bears, and welcome back to the last broadcast of this week. Now, today is Friday, December 4th, and on this day in history in 1783, the U.S. General, George Washington, before he was known as the first president of the United States, wanted to express his real appreciation for their years of service and brotherhood as he said goodbye to his troops and returned back to civilian life. Now let's take it over to Ariana who will inform us what this weekend's weather is going to be like. So let's take it over to Ariana right now. Good morning. Good morning, Carmen, and good morning to everyone watching. Today and throughout the weekend, you can expect cool temperatures. Today, you can expect temperatures to reach the mid-70s, and for your overnight lows, you can expect temperatures to reach the low 40s. For Saturday's daytime, Daytime high temperatures, you can expect temperatures to reach the low 70s. And for Sundays, daytime high temperature, you can expect temperatures to reach the high 60s. And for your overnight lows, you can expect temperatures to reach the high 40s at night. That's going to do it for today. See you back here on Monday. Happy birthday, Carmen. Thank you for watching. Now let's take, get back over to the birthday girl. Thanks, Ariana. Sounds like there's going to be a bit more of that chilly weather this weekend. Now, you may have heard that Mr. Barca is opening up a new virtual book fair. For more information on how to purchase books at the virtual book fair, check out the McGee website or have your parents check their class dojo messages. There are links to the virtual book fair on either of those platforms, so please be sure to check that out. Now, we have a special report to share with you. Julia Dream has interviewed many of our well-loved McGee teachers and found out what they are doing these days with distance learning. So let's so let's welcome them in. Good morning, Julia Dream. Good morning, Carmen, and good morning, McGee Bears. So we have a few teachers joining me for a conversation about how distance learning is going so far for them and for their students and parents. So I would like to welcome Ms. Bell Wilson, Mr. Nick Jr., Ms. Cote, and Ms. Julia. Good morning to you all. So first of all, what are some of the difficulties that you face with distance learning? Um, one of the difficulties is wanting to be there for students to be able to help them like we used to in the classroom. And so um, we have to be very creative about working with families in order to help students who really need us to be next to them, helping them out. Now keep in mind, I teach a first grade and second grade combination, but that's that's one of the you know biggest struggles. Well, it's not that easy to teach because some of the kids turn their cameras off and I'm not sure if they're paying attention. So I, I team teach with Miss Silva and we always say, oh, put your cameras on. We're gonna take a screenshot and so there's those kids. And then um, we do know that some kids know how to put on a different window. So they might not be 100% paying attention to us. Um, and then uh, oftentimes on my grid view, I can see the kids that are sleeping. Really connecting to my class. I feel like usually in a normal year on that first day, you meet everybody and you play games and you high five and um, I guess share fun facts about each other. That's been difficult to do online and sort of create those bonds with each other in, in the same speed or as uh, efficiently as we would have if we were together. I guess the, the major difficulty is not being able to help uh, the kids one-on-one -on -one, uh, in person, but also um, uh, technical difficulties at times. Uh, kids can't log in or, or they're frozen on the screen or I have problems with my Wi-Fi I think for two straight days and, and it was a little difficult so yeah those, those two areas. Oh I see. Well let's hope that will improve. So for the next question, what are some of the things that you like about the system? One thing that I like is that I have you guys all on the screen and I can see if, if uh, if you guys are being attentive or not, and and I also like that I don't need to dress up. Well, I too can be in bed, so, so you know, I too can have another window open. No, I'm just kidding. 
Um, I, I guess what's great about it is we're not getting sick. A lot of us are staying healthy, right? We're not catching germs or coronavirus, anything like that. So the only thing I like about it is that it is safer for families. I really like that my refrigerator is super close to me and that whenever I get hungry or I want a snack, I can just take three steps right here and grab something. And the microwave is only an extra three steps from there. So that's really cool. I don't have that in the classroom. One of the things that I like is that I can be wearing a nice top or a nice shirt and then be in my PJs <laughs> uh, or wearing slippers um, and nobody would notice. Uh, uh, I like that when I'm on break between sessions that I can go and change the sprinklers out in my yard or uh, I can have a snack with my son. Uh, I have a 12 year old at home who's uh, doing distance learning at home. So those are the things that I like. That's great. What would you say are some of the differences between distance learning and learning on campus? Well, you know, at school we can do a lot of activities. Um, by now we would have had the fall carnival. Um, I would be having my popcorn parties at Friday on Fridays at lunchtime for the kids who did all their homework. So now I feel like I can't give the kids rewards and treats. You remember, Julia Dream, you were in my class when the kids would read aloud on the microphone, they would go to the prize box. So I miss that, I miss the real fun things. Also, we would do art projects, we would be leaving, and right now we're, we're not doing the art projects. So those, those are some things that I miss. Um, it's difficult to, uh, to help the students, especially those that need more assistance. And, you know, when, when I'm at school, of course, you know, I'm able to walk around the classroom and make sure that kids are working and able to, to help them on the spot. Whereas with distance learning, it's a little more difficult. Well, hmm. because, you know, I, I mean, I don't have you guys in person uh, next to me. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit different. I think for me, the huge difference is really having to trust people and trust that they're doing the right thing when they're online in class. Because when we're at school together, I can see, hey, Julia's doing her work, Al's doing his work, everyone's doing the right thing. However, when we're online in the computer, um, it's difficult to know for sure that everyone's actually doing what they're supposed to. So that is a major difference for me. Mm -hmm. Well, the biggest difference is just not being able to see one another, you know, to be able to hug one another or high five one another or, you know, play with one another, share games, play games with one another like that. Um, so um, uh, eat together right next to each other. Um, and so, you know, those are, you know, definitely some of the changes. Uh, reading, you know, when you would read a book and now we have to read digitally or, you know, yeah, through um, websites um, and uh, working in groups. You know. Are there specific programs you are using now that you and your students really like and that you would use if and when you go back to school? Uh, the programs, I'm actually doing a lot of the same programs here in digital learning. We still have a Renaissance place. We still have the, the star reading, the math star. Um, we still have Epic, Mayan. Um, so a, a lot of programs I'm still using. We're still doing benchmark. We're still doing Think Central, Freckle assignments. Uh, every now and then I can show a little clip of a movie. I'm using YouTube. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of the programs I'm, I'm actually still using. Actually, that's one of the benefits of actually doing distance learning is that I think most teachers would agree and classes would agree that we've discovered websites and applications that we hadn't used as much and now we're using them. And so uh, like one of the like, favorite websites that we've used is the National Geographic Kid website for information on animals and habitats. Um, I know that my students like the eSpark application 
uh, we've been using Freckle. Uh, and then, of course, um, you know, there's there's also um, resources through the benchmark, through our regular uh, goal map and benchmark program that we hadn't utilized, but now we're utilizing them and we know they're accessible. And so that's something definitely that we will, you know, when we come back to a hybrid model or back to campus, that we would be using uh, those applications and those platforms when we come back. Yeah, I started using uh, Pear Deck, Pear Deck slides, and um, I really like them. I, I like the interaction that I'm able to have with, with the students. And um, I'm also using Think Central. Uh, there's a lot of programs available through Think Central, like the animated modules and models and, and uh, skills and practice. So. But definitely uh, Pear Deck I had never used before, so I will definitely be using it uh, when we get back to school. Yes, there is one that I've actually been using a lot. It's called Notability. And what it does is it turns my iPad into, I guess, a whiteboard where I can draw and do whatever I want on it. And for me and my class, it's been fun for our art and drawing projects, but also uh, just taking notes as well. And if I do have students that I see that are maybe falling asleep or drifting off a little bit, I can write little secret notes on the whiteboard to them just to see if they're paying attention. I might say, hey, Julia, you have a booger uh, hanging out of your nose. And then eventually that person might notice. And uh, I think it works well for us and it'd be awesome in the classroom as well. When the school opens up again, what activities are you looking forward to doing with students first? Well, we have to be really careful because when we come back, I'm not sure what the safety protocols are gonna be. But the day that we get permission to be able to work in groups and play games with our students and with each other, I'm looking forward so, so much to being able to create like, you know, um, like putting into practice our engineering practices and building models together uh, and, um, and playing board games together, playing tag outside you know, at recess time. This is something I think about every single day when I wake up. It's, I, I wish I was back at school and what am I gonna do that first day back? For me, what I think I want to do most is that outdoor, outside, like high five and playing and PE type of stuff. Uh, so I've been doing a lot of eating, like I said, and I'm starting to develop a bit of a bonsa that uh, shows up mostly when I sit down. I noticed when I got in my car the other day, my seat belt disappeared because my belly was hanging over it. And that's not a problem that I used to have. So for me, when you guys are back at PE at school and playing outside, I'm gonna be right out there with you. That's what I'm looking forward to. Well, definitely uh, soccer, the after school uh, uh, soccer uh, club that uh, we have at McGee. And, and also, uh, just interacting with the kids, interacting with my colleagues. Um, now for our last question. What advice do you have for the students who are really anxious to come back to campus? So just hang in there, boys and girls. You'll be back soon enough. Um, try to see the, the bright side of things that you are a little more relaxed at home right now and you're safer at home right now. So. Uh, be patient. Um, we will come back. It's, it's better to be, you know, safe than sorry. And like I said, just be patient, try your best, um, pay attention. And, you know, we will get back to school someday. And like I said, you know, hopefully when, when it's safe for all of us. That we all care about you, about all of you. And to make like make the best of the time that we can see each other through Google Meet and just to be patient and follow the safety protocols because the more we follow the safety protocols, the sooner we can come back to school. Yeah. I am very anxious as well. And I think this kind of is something we're all feeling. We all want to get back and we miss each other greatly. My advice to everyone is as much as this really isn't fun and kind of sucks right now, I think the longer that we spend away from each other, uh, the more we're gonna appreciate that time that we do have together when we get back. Well, thank you so much for, to all of you for taking the time to be here for today. Well, that's gonna be it for today. Now let's take it back over to Carl with a few more announcements. See you next time, boys. 
Thanks so much for that awesome report, Julie. Now let's check out who has a birthday today, as well as which celebrities share a birthday with you. Happy birthday to you all. Now let's see what we can expect to get for lunch today. You can get your lunch at North Burke Academy of the Arts, Rivera Middle School, Steam Academy at Burke, or South Ranchito Elementary, starting 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Let's take a look. Sounds great. Hope everyone is hungry. Well, that's going to do it for today. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And thank you, parents, for working so hard and enduring these virtual school days. Well, everyone, please remember to stay safe, be healthy, and to always remember to display pause. P is for promoting a positive environment, A is for acting responsibly, W is for willing to learn, and S is for showing respect. Once again, Bears, thank you for tuning in. I hope you all have a very nice morning and weekend. Bye.